Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live. Coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters. I'm Phil Falcone here with my business partner, Larry Steinhaus. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. Get ready to learn real estate. Get ready to learn real estate and stock option investing. Call us with your questions now at 855 939 1137. Is that your phone? I think that's your phone, Phil. I think you're the one making all the noise this time. I think it's your fault. You're doing it. Hey, I, I'm Larry. If you, didn't, if you guys didn't realize it, this this Larry. He missed he missed his whole intro. I'm gonna make you do the intro again, <laughs> because you know if you're gonna mess it up, you have to start all over again and do the intro again. You have to tell everybody who we are, where we are, why we're here, and why they should be listening to us. So now go ahead, Phil. Start all over again. Let me tell you something about me. I only make two mistakes a year, and I usually do them on the first week of January. And we, uh, so, wait, but but I guess this year you waited longer than that, huh? All right. Good afternoon, and welcome to Investor Schooling Live, coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters. I'm Phil Falcone with Larry Steinhaus, my business partner. That's where we were before you messed it up. Okay, now go, go from there. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. <laughs> Get ready to learn real estate and stock option investing. Call us with your questions at 855 939 1137. 855-939-1137. That's right. We're a live program, so we don't care what we're talking about. And we you, obviously make mistakes while we're live, too, don't we? You sure do. A hell of a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, saying hell is a mistake, actually, on the radio. I don't know if you could say that. Wait, hold hmm. on. Let me, let, me, let me beep you out again. Hold on. Okay. Now you can continue. Okay. That's right. We are a live program, so you can call us anytime during the show, and we'll take your calls. We will drop what we're talking about and take your calls. How about that? 855-939-1137. Investor Schooling is located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. That's correct. We're local guys, accessible to our students two nights a week. Learn this business from people who do it every day. What's happening, Larry? Oh, I don't know, man. I, all I know is, you know, we, we just totally messed up the intro to this show, so I, I'm just not in the mood for it anymore. So I'm going to go home now. And we're just going to leave. Forget it. I just don't want to talk about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me let me show you which way the door is. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. You know, I got to tell you something. Fred just on Facebook. So Fred works for us. Fred is our senior student liaison. And he just said he can't think of a question right now because he's so busy getting my Phil Falcone coveted seal of approval framed. So yesterday we did a live presentation for the Philadelphia, what was it, Philadelphia Real Estate Association, I believe. We did a live presentation. We did a live version of this show, and you gave Fred the coveted seal of approval. The Phil Falcone. The, the Phil coveted Falcone, seal right? Of approval. Seal, seal of approval, exactly. Right. So he was very happy about that, I'm sure. And uh, you know, and you, you well, probably there's a, there's a couple of things that you need to know about all of that. First of all, yesterday before we did the um, the live broadcast, I drank a whole bunch of cough syrup. You drank cough syrup. Yeah. Yeah. So and, um, I'm a little concerned if you drank cough syrup. Were you coughing before you drank the cough syrup? Yeah, so anyway, then at the party, I told <laughs> Fred, I said, there's a, a thing that you need to know about the coveted Phil Falcone seal of approval. He said, what's that? I said, it can be taken away. <laughs> I didn't know you told him that. That's yeah. very funny. So uh, are we taking it away right now because he, because, he, uh, did, because he was wearing a flower in his ear last night? No, but that's the beauty of giving this to somebody. You can sort of give it to them. And they're and you're proud of them, and right. they feel good. But then you can always take it away. All right. So Fred, you better be on your best behavior. Who feels going to take it away? Just yeah. so you, just so you know. And he kept asking me, "Does this mean that I can sit on your side of the table?" And I gave him a uh, very astounding no. Yes, you have to explain now. See, every time you do that, you have to understand that there's listeners who probably have never heard us before, or or don't know who we are. So you have to explain what you mean by your side of the table now. All right. So uh, we have the staff meeting um, on Friday mornings. And Larry sits on one side of the table. I sit on the other. Not at the heads of the table, by the way. We're actually right. at the op we're not we're on the same side of the table, we're different side of the table. It's not a the long the table. table, and Larry is on one side of the table. I'm on the other. And what we do is Larry has a few brown nosers who, yes. you know, 
kind of just mimic and follow Larry and do whatever he says. So I make those people sit on that side of the table with Larry. Only people who are on the same mental level as me, which is kind of like Mount Everest, those people are allowed to sit on my side of the table. And so, we wait. don't allow brown nosing on my side of the table. We don't allow that at all. So at this moment, you know, a number of the key employees from the company are all on my side of the table. Yeah, I, and, and here's the interesting part, and I have to say two things about Linda, my wife, sits on Phil's side of the table, and she just said something that I say to you every single week. You want to know what it is? What's that? Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a studio in our, you know, <laughs> we're in a studio in the basement of our headquarters, and we have to have it somewhat soundproof so you guys don't hear all the noises that go on in the background. And luckily, the air conditioner didn't come in because if the air conditioner came on, you would have heard. Whoosh! Got it. Well, so that would have been, yeah, that would have been, been a any problem. Worse than the start of the show. Yeah, exactly. So it's been one of those days where you know the show is just. So wait, let's think about this. We're ten minutes into the show now, and we've talked about nothing. <laughs> so if you're listening to us for the first time. Um, my apologies for wasting your last 10 minutes. So, Phil, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, we got some good stuff to talk about today. So, Larry and I have been having a wonderful year, but more important than that, we are having one amazing week. Yeah. And when we tell you uh, what's going on this week with us uh, personally, as well as at the school, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to believe. Why don't we get into that right now? I think that would be an awesome thing to, to talk about. So Larry and I did a live show yesterday for an event in Philadelphia, and we were talking about this. And one of the things I said to Larry, I started the meeting is, is Larry, I see your future. <laughs> so Larry started this fund, and he's investing uh, money for students. Don't call and well, ask. They're not all students, by the way. Okay. So – Larry has these people who have invested money into a fund, and he is using the money in that fund to invest in stock options, and it is going extremely well, uh, phenomenally well, and very impressive. So when I say to Larry that I see in his future, I see your future, Larry, and you will be a fund manager. Well, I'm technically already a fund manager. Yes. You know, it's just well, bigger funds will be coming in the future, which is exactly what I, I see. I see it, too, and I see that you see it. I think it's awesome. Uh, in fact, you know, you and I are creating a fund, too. We're going to talk about that. And probably not today, but we'll talk about that in the future as well. We're going to be talking about a real estate fund, a little bit different kind of type of fund. And, again, you know, for you guys who are listening, you can't, you can't invest in these funds. These are funds that are for private people only that we, that we have relationships with that we know. So we can talk about them, but we have to tell you that you can invest in them. Just uh, just. In case the SEC is listening to us, whatever. But here's the deal. So uh, what happened was these peop a bunch of people got together and said, hey, Larry, can you invest with – can you invest for me? And I actually did it in an LLC, which is kind of an interesting thing. By the way, we teach how to create funds. And I have to tell you something that's really cool. I'm going to go off on a tangent, but this is really great. At Investor Schooling, if you go to InvestorSchooling.com, you can, you can go to a free class this Thursday night. And we, will, we do teach how to create funds. So in other words, if you had a, an idea that you wanted to buy a hotel or you wanted to buy a, I don't know, an island, it doesn't even matter, or you wanted to invest in the stock market with a bunch of friends, uh, you have to do that legally and you have to do it a certain way. And we teach the ways to do it. And of course, when we teach the ways to do it, we also do it. And that's most of what I'm going to tell you, everything we teach or just about everything we teach, we do. And sometimes we're teaching something that we haven't done yet, so we decide to do it so we can prove to you that what we're teaching is sound. And that's pretty much how this fund started. Was we've been teaching people how to create funds, how to raise money, how to raise private money, and I created this fund. It was a stock options fund, and, and Phil and I are creating another fund that's a, that does something else. It's going to be investing in real estate, and we wanted to prove that it works. But to get back to the point, I had all these people. Then they, the fund in this case was twenty five thousand dollars a share, and the fund closed. Or in other words, when it closed, when I when I say closed, it meant that no one else could join the fund after September first. And as of September first, I was allowed to start trading in the fund. So all of these people per share have already gotten over $13,000 return cash paid to them in a in, in a payout. How's it 13 grand? I thought it was uh I it thought was, it was 10. No, it's it's uh, it was uh 3250 four times. Oh, okay. I thought it was yeah. 2500. So it's yeah. 3250. 3250 four times, right. 
they've gotten they've so they've already it. gotten roughly how much? They've gotten half their money back. Yeah, already. half their money back. Now, and when I say half their money back, they, they still have their money. It's still in the fund. I understand. The original money's still in the fund, but the, the, the they've made fifty percent of their money in a check because the fund distributes. It doesn't re reinvest. It doesn't reinvest. It, right. re it just distributes. Correct. Which is kind of neat. It's actually pretty exciting. We got we got people people saying they got a deal for us. A commercial property you might need your help with. So, uh, you know, why don't you call us up and tell us about it? You can call us at 855-939-1137. 855-939-1137. By the way, my wife's in the fund. And she's all excited, too, because she got a whole bunch of money. She got, so your she got wife's in the fund, and you're in the fund. And I'm in the fund, yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. How many total? So, so the ma I have three ch total shares. And there were certain rules on how you could – maximum they could have had was four. Mm -hmm. And there were certain rules on how you can have those shares. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's actually kind of fascinating uh, how the fund was put together. And we have an attorney that we use that does a great job of it, and it's fantastic. We, we, I've been killing it, and I'm pretty excited that we're going on and doing this. So if you guys want to learn how to do this, this is something we teach. We also teach how to invest in real estate. We teach how to invest in the stock market and how to invest in stock options. Now, listen, I created a set of rules, the rules of the crazy options trader – and the fund is trading with those rules. And that is how I am doing so well. And, of course, my favorite part was Monday. And I, I have to tell you something. I don't know if you remember last Sunday. I s you said, what are your stock options picks? And we were in a rush because we kind of like went overtime. And I yelled out a whole bunch of stuff. I yelled out CCL, RCL, AA, um, and WFC, I think was another one. I don't remember what I yelled out that moment. And the very next day, every single one of those popped. And I just happened to be sitting in positions in every single one of them. And because of that day, because I was sitting in those positions, that was a day that I made the most money in my entire life in one day. And how much money was that? $193,000 in one day. That was fun. I think we've got somebody on hold that you might know. Who's that? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Who's that? Hi, Papa. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, you got a question for us? Jordan! Who's this? It's Aubrey! Aubrey? Wow. What happened? Jordan gave you the yeah. phone number? All right, I cool. want to wish you a happy early birthday. Well, thank you. Oh, it's, uh, it's Phil's birthday tomorrow. My birthday's tomorrow, birthday. tomorrow, yeah. So, uh, you got a real estate or stock option question for us? Did you... Do you ever want to know anything about real estate? Sure. What would you like to know? Did you ever play the um, game Monopoly? Well, Did you ever play Monopoly? How do I buy a house? Okay, well, why don't you, what I suggest you do, if you want a good basis for uh, business knowledge about real estate, about money, how to manage your money, how to collect rent, what a mortgage is, how you can, uh, uh, how you can lose a property, how you can buy somebody else's property when it's in foreclosure, all the basis of of the real estate business can be completed by playing the game Monopoly. All right. Well, we got to cut you off, Arby. That was that's so cute. I think that's adorable. <laughs> and everybody know that tomorrow is Phil's birthday, so everybody's got to. Th thanks, Arby. It's so good to you to call. Do you know who I am? Oh, no. Right. Oh, you don't know who uh, I am? No, uh, hold up. Business investor. Uh, business partner. Business partner. partner. Yeah, I'm business partner. You don't want to say partner because that means something else I can't explain on the radio. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. <laughs> that was cute. That was cute, Phil. I got to tell you, that was the cutest thing we've ever done on this show. Yeah, actually, uh, Jordan had told me she was going to call, but she must have chickened out, so she got her cousin to do it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. I even gave Jordan a question to ask, a good question. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I don't All right. remember what it was. But. All right. Well, that was cute. That was definitely cute. I like that. All right. So um, since I asked you about your big deal. Oh, I needed to ask you about your big deal. Yeah, well, why don't you ask me about my so, big deal? So, so look, again, we're doing this, right? So Phil just had the largest, or is about to have the largest... Uh, it's not necessarily a wholesale deal, but the largest m amount of money he ever made for doing the least amount of work. I, I, here's the way I would describe it. All right. Look, it, it's hard to say it's the largest amount of money I've ever made on uh, a doing a real estate deal because obviously I have building, I have a building I have like a million dollars in equity in. 
But that was over many, many years. Right. So the best way to describe it is it's the largest amount of money that I am going to make uh, this Thursday on a real estate deal over a very short period of time. Okay? So I bought this house uh, roughly about 45 days ago for $260,000. The house is in Collegeville. And this house, uh, I went up there and took a bunch of trash out of the house, put them in trash bags. And each time I go to the house, I take the trash bags home and throw them out. And uh, make a long story short, I probably have worked just to get the use and occupancy permit. If anybody knows, you got to get a use and occupancy permit before you can use and occupy your house. So I had to go up there and, you know, do some smoke detector stuff and fix this and fix that, that kind of stuff. I probably worked a total of uh, somewhat something l sl a little bit less than 40 hours a week. And for that, I got a buyer to buy the property for $410,000. I paid $260,000 for it. In case you don't have a calculator in front of you, the spread on those two numbers is $150,000. Now, I do have to pay closing costs and some other things, so I'm probably going to only walk with about $140,000. You know, I, 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 I was impressed when you were making one hundred and fifty, but if you're only making one hundred and forty, I'm not that impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, you know, look, this is not a deal that I would say you're going to find uh, every other month, but... It's the kind of deal that if you're in the real estate business and you spend your life, you dedicate your life looking for real estate deals, every once in a while you're going to hit a, a exactly. home run, exactly. a grand, grand slam. slam. Yep. This one's more like a, more like a grand slam where um, not only did it score four runs, but the person in the stands who caught the ball dropped it and it landed back in your hand, <laughs> right? So <laughs> this, is, this is as good as it gets. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I one time did a deal, that clean and sweep, where I made 68000 in about 38 days. Yeah, that's pretty good. But this is uh, almost you know, more than fantastic. double that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So we've had, we've had a great month. We've had a great year in a month. Or actually, I had a great year in a day. So that was pretty cool. And you, know, you had a great year in a month, which is fantastic, right? So this is the kind of stuff we do. Look, we're, we're doing it. We're really doing it. This is not, you know, we're not just some guys out here that used to do it. We're not some guys out here that some TV show hired us and then, you know, made sure that we were successful. And then we started selling programs. Now, we do this. We actually do this. We're involved in this every day. You could see our accounts. You could see this, the stuff that we're doing. And if you want to learn how to do this, you're going to go to investorschooling.com and you're going to sign up for a free class this Thursday. And... I'm telling you, you will learn something. And by the way, it's a free class because everybody does this. They go, hey, how much is it? It's free. 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 It's free. Show up. Investorschooling.com. Sign up right now. And uh, you will be able to learn something this Friday. I'm sorry, this Thursday. And you will learn a lot. It's 7 o'clock tonight. 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Yeah, it's and really important to come here. I mean, it's yeah. free. I mean, just come here. Let me tell you something else. There's, there's like a special sauce that goes on at Investor Schooling. And so what is that? What am I talking about? When you hang around with a bunch of people who all have the same goals to improve their financial bottom lines, to learn how to do real estate deals and to do them, to, to invest in stock options and to learn that whole thing, it's a commitment of time. It's a commitment of your energy to be able to do it. And the school being – yes, I'm one of the founders of the school, as is Larry – but by hanging around with Larry and all the other students, I'm actually achieving levels of success that even I wasn't completely sure could be achieved. I agree. The school agree. is making me better just by being an owner of it. Do you feel that way, Larry? Yeah, actually, actually, I do. And I also see the students. You know, I see the students. Like some of the students, they team up. And they don't always team up. Like they don't go, hey, let's let's become partners. They team up. They do a deal together. Maybe it's one deal, or one student lends another deal money. And I mean, we we had an experience last night where where uh, one of our employees borrowed some private money from a from a one of our students. It just happened to be a great deal for everyone, and everyone's making money, and it's fantastic. It's a fantastic it's a fantastic play for everyone, and it does work. It works really well. Yeah, one thing was really cool about Monday night. We do this uh, mastermind meeting, and we went around the room, and so many people were making money. Boy, I was really proud. 
Yeah, exactly. Every, that, it seemed like great. everybody who got on the, the line said, oh, I made $4,000, I made $8,000, I made $15,000. It just It's just crazy. Right. And, of course, we can't guarantee you're going to make money because we, there's laws against us saying we're going to guarantee you're going to make money. Do, do I do I think you can? I know you can. If you follow some, if you follow what we tell you to do, I know you're capable of it. In fact, I don't know who you are right now, but I guarantee you, there's a lot dumber people than you making a lot more money than you, and we're going to teach you how to make a lot more money and still be smarter than them at the same time. So, uh, you want to hear about another deal I'm working on? I absolutely do. What's going on? Okay, so I call. You know. When I was writing the script for today's radio show, I you write a script. I mean, this isn't just like, like off the cuff. Well, there's a script right in front of you. There just, is. Just, I didn't even see it. You want me to clean up your eyeglasses so you can read it? I know my my glasses are like so filthy right now, aren't okay. they? Okay. So the third thing on the list is read it for me. Which one? The third thing on the list. The third purple line. Oh, Phil's latest subject do so subject two deal is a humdinger of a deal. Let me read that one more time. Phil's latest subject to deal is a humdinger of a deal. Yeah, I, 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 come, come on, Larry. If you're going to read it, you read it like this. Phil's latest subject to deal is a humdinger of a deal. Wait, I mean, let me try it. Phil's latest subject to deal is a humdinger of a deal. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's good. I like that deep voice. <laughs> that deep voice is good. Okay, so let me tell you about this deal. Um, <laughs> is it a humdinger? It's a humdinger. All, All right. right, let's go. So this guy, normally the first thing I do is I get a lead off for a particular property, and I call the client, and I book an appointment. My goal is to book an appointment so I can go there and talk to him about buying his house, right? That's what real estate investors like me and all over the world, that's what we do. What, what made this guy highly unusual is this guy says to me on the phone, mm -hmm. if you want to take over this house, subject to, you can do it. And first of all, not a lot of investors know what subject to is, but there's, there's a significant amount that probably heard the phrase. But that doesn't mean they've ever done one because most people have not ever done one. All right? But never in my 32 years of, of uh, career of being a real estate investor did a seller say to me, you can take over my house subject to if you want to. So, uh, you know, once I got to the meeting, I talked to him and I said, how do you know about subject to? He goes, 15 years ago, I paid like $800 to go to a course down by the Philadelphia airport where I learned about it. And he was basically, this guy was uh, significantly behind in his mortgage, about $24,000 behind. He was going to walk away from the house. He's moving to uh, Hilton Head, uh, what's that, North Carolina? Okay, so, so South he's, Carolina. he's South now Carolina. living. What is it? South Carolina. South Carolina. Okay, so he's now living in South Carolina. He just left the house, right? Handed me over the keys to a pretty phenomenal house. I mean, the amount of work this place needed uh, won't even hit five thousand dollars. House has really solid foundation. Have you ever seen like a house where there's a huge five foot concrete wall? on the exterior of the house and on the interior before right. the bricks come up, Sure. right? Good. You see a house like that. Okay, Parkwood looks like that. If you're familiar with the neighborhood of Parkwood, Parkwood's houses are all built like that with this huge concrete structure and then bricks all the way up to the top, right? And, and the sides, the front, the back of the house, everything is bricks. What, what I love about those houses is they look ex – I went to Archbishop Ryan in the 1980s. Those houses look exactly the same that they looked. 35 years ago, okay, in 1980. They look – 40 years ago now. 40 years ago in 1980, those houses look exactly the same. A nuclear bomb could hit Philadelphia. I'm pretty sure Parkwood's still going to be That's there, wild. okay? It's not going anywhere. This house is in great shape. It needed just a little bit of work. I have a, uh, a, a contract on my computer today – for $390,000 on this house. Now, the, the seller only owes, I'm sorry, not $390,000, $290,000. And uh, the seller owes two sixty. So I g this is a house that somebody gave me for free. I spent about less than $5,000 on it. And I now have an offer on the table. Should I sign it, which I believe I will, uh, I sign that contract. I don't know. I make about $25,000 for... Very, very little call. of work. 
a phone call. A couple of days. Yep. I did go back and forth to the house a number of times. Sure. I put up some money to get some guys to sand a wall, and, and I got to send a cleaner there. I mean, I'm yeah, pretty right, much sure. done. Yeah. I could probably should keep it. It's 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 kind of a property that would be a great rental property for a long period of time. Uh, I do have a business partner on it, not Larry, a different business partner. And I don't know that him and I are going to be doing anything in the future. So sort of I'm kind of in a position where I kind of have to sell buy him it out. just because, yeah, I could buy, buy him, him out. out. Yeah. Would be one way to keep it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's all about making sure. money, too. So yeah. if there's money on the table. And if I if I have to take 15 grand sure. for my efforts, yeah. so what? I'll just take it. I'll put it in stock options. So it's interesting. So we're, we're sitting here, and Phil's talking about a subject to deal, which basically means he took over the, the guy's mortgage payments. He takes title to the property, and he takes over the mortgage payments. He doesn't have to qualify for a mortgage. He doesn't have to put any money down. He doesn't have to go through a bank. He doesn't do anything. He just signs a piece of paper, and now he owns the property. Okay, it's slightly more complicated than that, but believe it or not, it's not that much more complicated than that. It's really not. That. I, I got to tell you a funny story about this property, sure. too. All right, so the seller <clears throat> is totally cooperating with me. Completely. Give me anything I want, right? So he gave me access to the website, which is something you should always ask well, for if course, you're doing yeah. a subject to deal. That's the bank he's talking about. Right, right. And um, I'm calling the bank, and I sent them a letter of authorization so that I could be shared any, you know, mm -hmm. as a third party. I could be shared information about the deal. I could call and ask questions, that kind of thing, right? Well, I'm... I send in this fax. That's what they wanted. I can't send them an email. I got to send them a hysterical. fax. Banks, I don't even banks understand. are the only people who use fax machines. We have fax machines here, it? just so we could deal with the banks. That's what it. is it? 1970? Yeah. What the heck do we need to use a fax machine for in any circumstance? Exactly. I have no idea. It's amazing. Anyway, so I'm really getting frustrated because I'm calling the bank every day and I'm going, "Is the third party authorization approved?" Every day, no, it's not approved. I said, "Why? Why not? You've had it for like a week and a half." They said, oh, sometimes if you faxed it in, it's going to take 30 days. I said, my only other option was to fax it or mail it. You're telling me mail is faster, faster than the fax? fax? That's nice. C ridiculous, right? That's anyway, nice. so I'm looking at this website, and I'm kind of just trying to find out when is this thing going to sheriff sale, and uh, what is the amount of money that's owed on it. And I see this button that says, add third-party people. So I actually add myself on the website as the third-party user. Oh, that's hysterical. Hang up the phone. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Exit the website, pick up the phone, call the bank, and I'm approved. Wow. So they don't even tell you to do that. They just tell you that they have to fax a piece of paper over. They didn't tell me to do it. Right. But I just sort of saw, oh, add third-party users. Amazing. And I went on, clicked it, put my name and phone number in. And I was instantly improved. That's amazing. And I actually left the website and then called wow. them immediately. How, how great was that? That is funny. That's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah. So, so, I, so, so you're buying the house subject to, which, again, like I said before, you know, you take over mortgage payments. You, you own the property. No, I mean, basically, you're paying the transfer tax sometimes. Sometimes you don't even pay the transfer tax. Sometimes you get the seller to pay the transfer tax, depending on how bad it is. But, again, you, pay, you get the property for free. You may pay transfer tax. You may pay a couple of bucks for closing. And the property is now yours. Now I'm doing two of these in December. You're doing. You just did one just now. And and here's the thing: they happen all the time. So when people come to us, they go, "Can you really buy properties with no money and no credit?" Not only can you really buy properties with no money, and no credit, but Phil and I have lots of money. We don't need to do this. We do it because we can. And we teach it because we want you to learn it too. Who wouldn't want to make twenty five, thirty thousand dollars on a real estate deal with, with no money in your pocket? Not even a week's worth of work. Right. So here's a question for you. If you guys want to call in, I got a question for you. Here's a trivia question. If you have five hundred thousand dollars in the bank, how many properties do you think you can buy? So you have five hundred thousand dollars in the bank. How many properties do you think you can buy? You can either you can either say it on Facebook if you're watching on Facebook. You can answer the question, or feel free to call us at 855-939-1137. 855-939-1137. Again, the question is: If you have five hundred thousand dollars in the bank, how many properties can you buy? All right, we should probably go to a commercial. What do you yeah, think? Let's do one. While everybody tries to figure that one out. All right, thanks, John. Go to a commercial. All right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. Hey, everybody. We are a live show. That's it. We are a live show. We're actually broadcasting live out of our Langhorne headquarters. We have a studio down the basement. And if you guys ever want to come here and tour the studio, we'd be more than happy to show it to you. 
And this is just great stuff. We actually developed it during COVID because we couldn't go into Philadelphia for many reasons. <laughs> Some of them were not just COVID. And we decided that we would build a studio in our office, and now we communicate directly with the radio station. As a matter of fact, you may be listening to us at s on several radio stations because we're a syndicated show. And if you call at 855-939-1137 and we happen to not be live, then you can still talk to me. It will actually go to a private number that I have that I answer. So if you have a question right now and you're not listening live, you feel free to answer. Feel free to call, 855-939-1137. Of course, you can call us right now. This is like a, this is like shorting your cat. They don't know whether they're live or not live. But you can call at 855-939-1137 and ask us questions. I just asked a question before we went to the break, and the question was, if you have $500,000 in the bank, how many properties can you buy? All right, we have no one who called us, but, we, but I, have, I have a question for you, Phil. Do you want to answer that question? Sure. Well, how many properties can you buy? If you have $500,000 in the bank, how many properties can you buy? Really, how much money you have in the bank has almost nothing to do with it. I mean, it helps to have some money in the bank. You don't need anywhere near $500,000. So I'd say the answer to the question is uh, probably you can buy as many houses as you want to buy. Right, and I'm actually going to add to that and still have the $500,000 in the bank. Oh, sure, sure. That's very <laughs> possible. I mean, uh, look, I right now am cash rich, okay? And when I close this deal on Thursday, I'm going to be extremely cash rich. Yeah, absolutely. But the truth is I don't want to use that money to buy properties. I would rather use somebody else's money. Uh, absolutely. I had a discussion with several guys this morning. I was walking by a couple of guys at the Delaware Valley Tennis Club. <laughs> You're going to start that again? No, I'm, that's <laughs> where I was when I walked by him. I'm just telling you the story. And one of the things that one of the guys was complaining about was he said he didn't trust the stock market uh, because, you know, I guess he doesn't like Democrats. So he didn't trust the stock market because uh, Trump would no longer be president. He said he's pulling all of his money out. And I said, well, I've got a great solution for you. How about being a private investor? Yep. And I gave him a little five-minute presentation because he was actually bragging about he, – he was telling people that he has a safe and he has another safe and he has another safe, and that's where he's going to put his money. And I said, well, I got a much better idea because, you know, we all have an obligation to turn whatever money we have into more money, especially if you intend to live a very long period of time yes. or leave something of value to your heirs. Uh, money is something that you have an obligation to continue to be smart with. Sticking your money underneath a mattress or in a safe is not a plan. That is a cop-out. That is, that is not thinking at all. That is not using your brain on any level. That's foolish, okay? So I told him a little bit about, look, I'm doing real estate deals all the time. Would you like to finance them? I would pay you an interest rate in exchange for, you know, uh, the loan that you're going to give me and secure it with a note and a mortgage just like every piece of property on the planet. You know what's cool about that, too? Most people don't even realize this, but a lot most most people that you run into, the average person has most of their money in their, in an IRA or maybe a Roth IRA. Maybe they have 100000 200000 300000 And they're like, I'd love to lend you the money, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to pay taxes on it if I, put it, if I use my IRA money. Right. And the reality is they don't have to pay taxes on it. Their IRA can actually lend you the money, and you pay back the IRA, and it grows tax-free or tax-deferred, depending whether it's a Roth or a IRA. It grows tax-free or tax-deferred, just like any other investment. You know, I, I pay a lot of money every month to people's IRAs. It's actually pretty awesome. I mean, I write checks to so-and-so benefit IRA, so-and-so benefit IRA, you know, your beneficiary IRA, and I just keep writing those checks to IRAs. It's kind of wild, actually. Why don't we talk about that for a minute? Sure. So um, what is the maximum amount that you can put in an IRA? The maximum amount per year? Yeah. So it's 6500 plus 500 if you are a uh, if you're over 55. This year it's 6500 plus 500 so if you're over 65 so 7000 for you and I. You are 55, right? Uh, tomorrow. You're 55 I'm tomorrow? 55 tomorrow. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty funny. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I actually was making fun of you. No, I, I thought you were, I thought you were older than me. No, my I'm going to be 57 you know, this month. You know that I am not older than you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have all that gray hair. I thought maybe you were. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with the freak flag being being gray. I'm fine with okay. it. 
It keeps the young girls from bothering but, me. But, but at least Before you have my hair. hair was gray, man, I was getting hit on left and right by girls. Is now, now they leave me alone, and I can focus on making money. You know, we have, sometimes you have to calm the students down. <laughs> Not exactly. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I, I like the I like the old man look. I got to tell you something. One thing I enjoy is okay. So I I play basketball. I play tennis. And I love it when people see me. They they see like this. Right. I'm not a big man, so I I'm this little guy who doesn't look like much, and I look like an old man, right, with a gray beard and a gray mustache and flowing gray hair. Yes. And then then I start playing with them, and I kick their buttocks. Yes. Yes, that's what I love. I love it. I like it. Yeah. That's very good. All right. So anyway. Yeah. So yeah, you so put seven thousand right, right. is the uh, maximum amount that right. you can put in per so year. Right? With this year, next year it'll probably go up to thirty five hundred. Okay. Well, ho- hopefully it does. Yeah. But um, so one of the things that you were talking to me about was uh, I'm making all this money off this real estate deal. Could right. I just take seven thousand for me, seven thousand for my wife, chuck it into yes. two new two two separate IRAs? Absolutely. Right, but not the school's one. It has to be a separate. No, no, plan. right. So the school has a four hundred one k plan, which is completely separate. Right. And then you would do that. You would put the seven thousand away in your name, put seven thousand away in her name. You'd open an IRA. You could open an IRA in a TD Ameritrade account, which is kind of cool too. And, and can you can I, trade can stock I still options trade stock options yes. with it? So you yes. can do that. Right. Absolutely. So I just got to call TD Ameritrade and set it up. Yeah, you could just do it yourself. I could actually show you how to do it. It's really easy using their 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 thing. It's it's almost the same thing you did when you opened your account, except this time you open it up as an IRA. And it'll it'll let you know that you can't put like if you try to put more money in, it won't let you put the more money in because it knows you're making a mistake. Okay, okay. And it won't let you withdraw the money without warning you that there could be a penalty if you so withdraw. So as long the money. as you can trade stock options with it, when when do you have to keep it in there too? So it's, I, th- I believe it's seventy two and a half. Double check with your accountant if you're listening. I believe it's seventy two and a half. Where you have to start making uh, mandatory withdrawals, and I don't remember what the formula is, but there's mandatory withdrawals. But so what? It doesn't matter. Now here's the other thing that's really cool too. You can actually have an IRA and a Roth IRA. Now the Roth IRA you never have to pay taxes on. So, but the the thing is the difference though is so like when you put that money away, that fourteen thousand away, you can write that fourteen thousand dollars off on your taxes this year. So in other words, you're not paying income tax on the fourteen thousand. Which is great, especially with the, how much money you just made. So you can make a bunch of money and then stick it in an IRA right. and not pay any taxes. Not pay any taxes, exactly right. Cool. But if you have a Roth IRA, you can put the same money in. The problem is going to be, however, that you don't get the tax write off. But when you withdraw the money, when you're in your 70s or 80s or whatever it is that you want to do, when you withdraw the money, you're not paying taxes on on the fruit. So in other words, the seed would be the seven thousand. If you turn that seven thousand into a hundred thousand, you don't have to pay taxes. On the difference between the seven thousand and the hundred thousand, so that's what's really cool about a Roth IRA. So a lot of people will take their IRAs and convert them into Roth IRAs. And here's a little here's a little trick. So sometimes, especially at the end of the year, we're heading toward the end of the year. Here's a little trick that I really recommend you do. And again, we're not accountants, we're not attorneys. I want you to check with your accountant attorney with this because uh, I'm, again, we're giving you advice based on our <laughs> successes and experiences. But what you can do is, if you're not sure if you qualify for a Roth IRA, because there are Income requirements, I believe, and I'm, I'm not sure, but I believe the number is 180000 for a couple. So if you make more than 180000 you can't contribute to a Roth IRA. It has to be a regular Roth or a regular IRA. But if you're not sure you're going to make that, like you're on the cusp, and you're running, and again, check, double-check the number. Uh, if, if you're on the cusp and you contribute, you, you know you can contribute to an IRA no matter how much money you make. You move it into an IRA now, so that you have the money right now. You move it into your IRA right now. And if you at December 31st, you discovered that you didn't make enough money where you know where they would won't let you put into a Roth IRA. You could move that money up until I believe it's April 15th, which is the tax deadline. You could move that money into a Roth IRA and now have and now and just not deduct it off your taxes. So it's actually a really cool way to kind of sneak into the Roth IRA if you're not sure you're going to make it. But again, in your case, I might suggest for you. And again, I, I, I don't. We'll talk about it offline. But I would suggest for you maybe putting it into a regular IRA because you probably could use the tax deduction this year. Definitely, because of all the money you're, you're making. I'm doing the same thing. I, we have this. I do the same thing. I already put uh, one seven thousand away, and by the end of the week, I'm going to put the second seven thousand away as well. So you just do that every year as a habit. Yeah, yeah. You, well, th- th- it's seven thousand this year. Last year, I think it was sixty five hundred. But yeah, you could do it. So you you could do it based on your income, and there's a five hundred dollar bonus you could put in. Now the other thing too is, um, you know, so if you have a four hundred one k plan, because a lot of people have four hundred one k plans, and that's all they save with. 
absolutely put in as much money as you can to your 401k plan. You can put up to twenty twenty six thousand dollars into your four hundred one k plan. If you if you're making that kind of money and you can put twenty six thousand dollars away, it's tax. It can be tax deductible if it's not a Roth. If it's if it's going into <coughs> most of the time, it's not a Roth because most companies won't give you that option. So you can put twenty six thousand dollars away, get a tax deduction on that, have it grow, and on top of that, what's really really cool about that, if you have a four. By the way, if you have a four hundred one k plan right now, you can withdraw up to a hundred thousand dollars of that money. Right now, because of the CARES Act, because of what's going on with coronavirus, you can withdraw, pay no penalty, only pay the taxes on it. Now, I just told you about a Roth IRA. This is a really great suggestion, and I'm really going to tell you to talk to your accountant and make sure you understand this before you do it. But you could take your money out of your 401k plan, which remember, your 401k plan was captured money. You can't touch that money until you leave your company. Like, you leave your company, a lot of people cash in their, IR, their 401k, which is not a great idea, or they move it into an IRA, or they move it into a self-directed IRA. But if you have hundred thousand, if you have 200000 in your IRA, you can take up to half, so up to a maximum is 100000 you can take off out of your 401k, move that into a Roth IRA, and pay the taxes on it. You're not going to pay penalty, but pay the taxes on it. Now you go, oh, there, you're going to pay taxes on it? That's not that good of a deal. No, it's a great idea, because you move it into a Roth IRA, and now your Roth IRA will grow tax free forever until uh, forever 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 and you can actually take that money and you can invest in real estate you can lend it to somebody if you want to you can do anything you want with it where before your 401k would only be ca- would only be allowed to invest in the programs that your 401k administrator p- picked so I- i'm telling you this is like an incredible idea if you guys want to if you guys want to come on on thursday c- go to investorschooling.com and grab me a site i'll tell you more about this this is an amazing idea if you have a 401k plan. Take the money out now. You should do a presentation on that. For the I, I probably should. You're probably right. Yeah, I probably should, yeah. yeah. Because it's a, it's a lot to wrap your head around if you don't know much about it. Yeah, yeah it's confusing to some people. You know, one thing I'm planning on doing is I'm going to wait until the year ends. And I want to, you know, provided that I have the continued success that I've been having this year with the stock option account for the uh, – for the IRA, I want to just open it up and show that the maximum al- I was allowed to put in was sixty five hundred. Yeah, or seven thousand. Right now, yeah. I'm at nineteen thousand. You could put in seven thousand because it's your birthday this year. Okay, okay, but yeah. all right. So, okay, so anyway, so I'll be yeah. able to I'll be able to show an account that has nineteen thousand dollars in right. it that I that I created from. Uh, a $6,500 contribution spread out over 12 months. So the rest right. of the money is not even in there yet. Right. So this year, and uh, you know, both of us, we, we have – so we want to – because <laughs> we're, we're a company that obviously we, we understand all these tax advantages, and we take advantage of these tax advantages, and we have a 401K plan at Investor Schooling. And our 401K plan is probably the only 401K plan you've ever heard in your entire life that allows the participants to trade stock options in it. So imagine that. How cool is that? So, Phil, you tripled your account, right? Yeah, I mean... uh, The amount of money you put away, right? Well, uh, right now it's at $19,000. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, right? Just under $19,000. Right, exactly. It's like (laughs) $18,750. So, I mean... um, By the way, I would recommend you pull me aside and change your your deductions and make it higher for the end of the year to get the maximum, which is $26,000, withdrawn out of your account. We'll talk about that. Okay. I, I can see the confusion in your face. But yeah, the maximum you can put out is 26000 Put out the 26000 So I've actually maxed mine out at 26000 and my account right now is 57000 So this is the first year we did this. And this is, you did that this year? I did that this year. So this is the first year that we, had, we, did, we did the 401k, right? We did it as of January 1st. And I, I turned 26000 into fifty seven or 58000 right around that number. It's actually bad for you. Why? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah well, com- but it's not really true because you got to remember, I put that money in slowly because every week yeah, I would put yeah, a little okay. bit more in at a time. So yeah. it wasn't like I doubled, you know, right. I, du- I, I. But I you mean, know. you know, based on some of the stuff that you've done with stock options, <laughs> it's actually not good. <laughs> right. It's funny. Like you just making 100% on your money is actually bad for you. Yeah, it's kind of weird that you say that, but yeah, you're, you're yeah, right. But yeah. I, I've had some bad moments. <laughs> yeah, of course. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so if you have any questions, you can call us at 855-939-1137. We actually went on an interesting tangent today. I actually liked it because you could just see that we're not just about real estate. We're not just about stock options. We're about money, about money mindset. We understand how to make money, how to pay less taxes. And look, you know, we got Joe Biden most likely. Ugh, 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 bleh, 
coming in. And if he is, I promise you, you're going to pay more taxes. And if you want to learn how to pay less taxes, you want to know how to do that. And Investor Schooling, we're going to teach you some methods on how to do that. So go to InvestorSchooling.com. You can RSVP for this Thursday. And we will see you at 7 o'clock then. You know what? Why don't we go to a commercial and I'll talk about some great stock options pick. Take us out, man. Wow. I'm like, we got some serious distortion going on there. Well, welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. I'm hoping you guys can hear us. There we go. That's better. All right. And, uh, hey, we're having a little bit of fun here. We're talking about some other stuff. And actually, during the commercial break, if you guys were on Facebook Live, you heard us. But during the commercial break, Phil and I decided that we're going to actually teach this this Thursday. We're going to teach this IRA method. We're going to talk about 401K plans. We're going to talk about IRAs. We're going to talk about Roth IRAs and how you can put your money away and how you can pay less taxes. By the way, no matter who the president is, it doesn't really matter. No matter who the president is, you're going to be able to pay less taxes. Now, here's something interesting, too, Phil, and I, I'm sure you're going to realize this as time goes by. One of the most annoying things about stock options is there's no deductions on stock options. You actually can't deduct any money on stock options. So, you know, if you make a half a million, you might have to pay $125,000 in taxes. Isn't that horrible? It sounds terrible. It is. It's, it's, poor it's awful. Poor baby. You poor baby. It's, it's awful. I mean, you know, uh, well, I, I, did I, ever tell you, I think I told you this story once before where the first year I was trading stock options like and made substantial money. The, uh, the accountant, you know, flips the paper over to me and goes, here, this is how much you owe. And I looked at the number and I said, is that how much I'm paying taxes on? He goes, no, that's how much you owe. I got faint. <laughs> I actually got faint. The number was huge. And it's more money than most people make in a year. Actually, it's more money than some people make in two years. <laughs> well, uh, it's one of, the, uh, one of the challenges of being an entrepreneur. You know, I, I just... I'm just working on things to make money, right. make money, make money, make money. And then at the end of the year, I don't really have my taxes all calculated. I send all that stuff to my accountant. I generally ask for an extension. So I find out like in October of the following year, right. oh, by the way, you owe uh, yeah. 76000 Yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> and it's like, mm, damn. Yeah, and, and then and then when you actually figure it out that you only paid you know a fourteen or sixteen or seventeen percent effective tax rate, you feel really good. Yeah, but it's still you know it's still like oh jeez, I gotta write a check like that. I know, right? Exactly. And by the way, I gotta tell you something th that's really interesting. And I don't know if you do this, but I do this. Don't write the check. Call the IRS and ask for a payment. Ask for a payment plan. Yeah. yeah, the payment plan is great. It's a one percent per month payment plan. It's less than a credit card. I know, but uh. But when you owe like big checks year over year over year, at some point you got to write a big check. Yeah, well, you know, I usually try to get as much as I can paid off usually by January. But again, you're right. It, it's it's but it's much. It's a better play. Plus, it doesn't show up on your credit. It doesn't show. You know, not taking money out of the bank. I mean, if I'm paying one percent and I'm making twenty or thirty percent in the stock market, why would I want to? Why would I want to give them the cash that I'm making money on? Never do that. Never. That's a big mistake. So anyway, let's go over to some stock option picks. All right, all right. So last week, I mean, I. I, I, I'm going to tell you, uh, luck. Those are amazing picks. And here's the funny part. They're back in play. But they're not quite in play the way they were before. And so one of the things that I'm going to suggest, so RCL, we said RCL last week was a call. It's about to be a put. When RCL hits 75, if it hits 75, it did last week and I missed it. Actually, I sold it at, a, at 77, but I didn't get a chance to buy the put on it at the same time. But at 75, so it's a little bit lower than that. It's so a 71 right now. Uh, at 75, it's definitely a put play. I would play it to 65, and I'd take a quick profit out of it, and I'd make that money. Um, AAL actually went down the most of all of them. And AAL right now, anything, anything below 12 to me is a call. And, in fact, I bought 100 contracts on, I think it was Friday or Thursday. I can't remember which one. I bought 100 contracts of AAL uh, going into, I think, either January or February. I can't remember which. And I bought it with a ten dollar strike price for three bucks, and the stock is at twelve dollars and thirty seven cents. So I'm actually sixty three cents away from my intrinsic value, which is fantastic. So it's a great play. So anything under twelve would be a call for me, and I'd load up on this. I think this is a good one. I really do. I think it's a, a fantastic play. Uh, you know, we're going to go back over to CCL. If CCL goes, CCL seems to run. If it goes below fourteen, now it's at sixteen, so it's not it's not anywhere near. As a matter of fact. It's not a call or a put for me at this point. I would say Carnival is a is a uh, a, a put at 18. 
and a call at 14. I'd rather see it go to 14. That's better for me because I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of it going to 18 right now and putting a put on it because we, as we get closer to the fact that cruises are going to start up again, I think uh, I think the stock will start to rise. There is one one concern of mine with cruises, and you know, you, you know, I like to take cruises. I'm afraid they're going to have have everybody take COVID tests before they go on a cruise, and I really just don't want to do that. I, I I think it's total crap. Or if the or if the vaccine comes out, they're going to say you have to be vaccinated before you can take a cruise. Yeah. I don't know. How, how do you have feel you about it? Have you ever that? had a, a COVID test? I have not. I've had two of them. Have you really? I didn't know that. Yeah, because uh, only because when Terry and I went to visit her mother, we didn't want the responsibility of. Uh, Getting her sick. Uh, there was remember the Tommy yeah, Tommy sure. situation yeah, yeah. where we thought he had it. Right. And then there was another situation where Terry and I were going. Both times we went down to shore. We go down to shore often to visit Terry's mom. And in in both times we went, Terry had a sore throat one time, and the other time was the Tommy situation. Right. Right. Sure. And I'm telling you, they take this Q-tip thing yeah. and they stick it like up in to nose, here. Yeah. It's painful. Yeah. And uh, it's not fun, and it costs about 150 bucks. But well, aren't the tests supposed to be free now? With the, w- every insurance supposed to give it to you free, I thought. Well, all I can tell you is in, in the Wildwood area, you just go into these urgent cares and oh, okay. they do it for you. And it costs uh, – they didn't say anything about money when I was there. And then you get mailed a bill for uh, okay. $150. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So we spent $300 on COVID so, Yeah, right. Well, well anyway, that's, that's what I'm afraid of for the, for the cruise lines is they're going to have to do that. And if they do that, I think that there's going to be less people traveling. And, it, and the cruise stocks are not going to rebound to the fullest, but we're going to have to find out what happens with that. Also, the vaccine. If the vaccine comes out, they may say you have to show proof of vaccine. I, I'm not a fan of that either. I, I think that's no hard. No way I'm taking that vaccine. I, I don't care what they do. I, I thought that was exactly what you were going to no say. No way. Yeah. I'm an anti-vaxxer, have been for many yeah. years. And I can tell you that regular vaccines don't probably cause more problems than they solve. And you tell me you're making one fast, extra yeah. fast? Forget it. I got no faith in that. So I think we got about 15 seconds. What do you want to say to everybody? Well, uh, I want to say get your butt to investor schooling Thursday night at 7 p.m. It's 108 Corporate Drive in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Just go to investorschooling.com and put your name and email address in so you can come to a class and learn about all the things we were talking about on today's show. Thanks so much. Well, that's it, guys. We'll see you on Thursday.